Welcome to the Cinema Rag, where we celebrate the greatest and worst in Hollywood films and their most self-indulgent, narcissistic actors, directors, and producers. Here, we will laud and malign Hollywood's seedier elements with levity and humor. They love cinema as much as anyone does. and They've been talking about it for over 30 years. Time to get trashy. Here's Gregory and May. Hello, everybody. This is Gregory, and welcome back to another episode of the Cinema Rag. I hope you're doing well today. Today, we're going to do a quick episode on why I hate, and I mean hate, Marvel movies, DC movies, and any comic book movies out there. Now, some of you might like these things, and I'm not casting aspersions on you. I'm not maligning your reputation or your ethos, because I know there are Comic-Con kind of type people who love this stuff. I'm just expressing my opinion why I hate this stuff. So you have every right to love this stuff, and I have every right to hate this stuff. So let's start with the basics. Now, growing up, I did see Tim Burton's Batman. I think the first two. I think I probably saw all the ones, the early Batman iterations with Kilmer and Clooney. They were all right. I was very young at the time, so I, I thought they were awesome. Maybe not, maybe not the Clooney one. Even I knew the Clooney one was pretty awful. Then the X-Men movies came out. They were all right. Then the Spider-Man movies came out. And at this point, I'm already you know 30 years old with the Spider-Man movies come out, the Tobey Maguire ones. Yeah, 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 all right. I think Spider-Man 2 was decent. I don't think I ever saw Spider-Man 3. And then after that, uh, I probably haven't seen much Marvel. Now, to be fair, I think Iron Man came out, what, 2007? And then you've had the 26 of the Marvel movies. And then the DC reboots with Superman and Wonder Woman and all these. So I, let me tell you how many of these I've seen in entirety. Iron Man 1. <laughs> Wait, I, I'm sure there's more. Thor Ragnarok. I do remember that one. Wonder Woman 1. Guardians of the Galaxy 1. I think I saw Thor 1 with Portman. Half of Captain America 1. If you notice there's a trend in all of these things. There is a trend. Why don't I like these movies? Well, on a lot of levels, I don't like them. But let's go with the basics. They're predictable. They're predictable. It's the same in all these stories. Just move them to different settings, different characters, but it's the same. Act one. It's it's Joseph Conrad's Conrad's masks, uh, heroes with a thousand faces. You know, it's it's the same thing. Person discovers a talent. Act one. Act two. We 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 learn who the villain is, and the the protagonist learns to hone or work on their talent. Act three. Big fight scene, cities are destroyed, but ultimately your hero never dies. No, but wait, Gregory, in, in, age, in Infinity War, Age of Ultron. Okay, how many movies did it take to get to that point? So look, if I'm watching Iron Man 1, Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3, Captain America 1, Captain America 2, Wonder Woman 1, Guardian of the Galaxy 1, I know these people aren't going to die. It's like when I was watching Obi-Wan, the Disney show. I'm like, why am I watching this? I know how Obi-Wan's going to die. Spoiler alert, right? I mean, come on, we know that, that happened in 1977. We know how Princess Leia is going to die. Kudos to Ryan Johnson's Last Jedi. I thought that was visually stunning, but I, I, I really abhor the way they had her die and Luke die. So why am I watching this? Where is the suspense? No one important is going to die in Obi-Wan. This is what bothers me about these kind of prequel packages. I get why they do it for the younger generation, for the money. But come on. There's no suspense. So when I'm watching Marvel, when I'm watching the Superman reboots, and, with, and I've seen, honestly, more Marvel than DC, but that's not saying much. There's no tension. Why do I care if fourth build person dies? Why do I care about some supporting character who dies? I don't care. So kudos after what? I don't know, 18 to 19 movies, they finally kill off some people? 
some of the Marvel people. But now they're just rebooting them all again. So why am I going to go watch Black Widow? Why am I going to watch these movies? They're predictable. They're over CGI'd and they're boring. Now, again, if I'm 12, different perspective. Because when you're 12, you think every movie's good. I asked my 11 year old, name me a bad movie. I mean, he, he couldn't really name a bad movie. Though he did say, Last Skywalker was pretty bad. So to his credit, he has some taste already. <laughs> but when you're young, you don't know any better. When you're young, you're, you're really stimulated by the visual effects and, and you're not really looking at plot development, character development, and so forth. So some of it is just age. But then again, I have friends who were very into these movies that are 40s, 30s, 30 year olds. And I get it. They grew up on the comics, so you have an attachment to it. But for someone who did not grow up on the comics, I was not a comic book geek like the guys in Chasing Amy. Great, you know, okay, probably Kevin Smith's best movie. But I, w I didn't grow up in that milieu. So I was just a guy like, oh, these comic book movies are coming out. Same for Transformers. I mean, we don't have to just stick to DC and Marvel, just any IP, essentially. You're like... <sighs> Okay, but so why do I need to go to a theater, spend fifteen dollars to watch cities explode, and I'm supposed to have this tension when, when Megatron and Optimus Prime fight, or these two characters who I know are going to survive because they're going to be in the next movie, like when Obi Wan and Darth Vader are fighting in Obi Wan, in Kenobi. It's like you know neither of them are going to die where they're fighting, so why even have this scene? So part of it is age. Part of it is I don't have an attachment to these properties because I didn't read the comics. Part of it is they're destroying Hollywood. I, I honestly think this because if you look prior to 2007, we actually had, and I talk about it on this movie, on, on this, on, on I think episode four, why don't we have more dramas, romantic comedies, and comedies. And it's really because this, these, these Marvels, these, this, I would just call them comic books slash action IPs, have pushed all these other movies out of the theater. And if you look at the summer schedule for 1992, or one of the best years of all time, 1999, you saw a wide breadth of, of movie types. Yes, there, were, there, there was going to be like Force, uh, not Force Awakens, uh, Phantom Menace came out in 99. There's going to be some, some of the classic Disney slash summer blockbusters. But you did have other movies coming out that were adult dramas that did very well. You had comedies that came out that like American Pie came out that year that, were, that do very well. And all these things. And now you look at it and it's essentially tent, tent pole movies, previous IP movies. And, and so forth. And that's it. Every other movie, it's like there's only so much oxygen in the room and they suck it all up. They suck up all of it, all of it up with a little horror as well, making some money off of it. And so now when you look at Hollywood, it's essentially the only movies that are getting gigantic budgets are going to be the ones that are going to get money back. And I get why Hollywood does it because they ultimately care about bankability and money. I get why they do it. I just lament it as a cinephile that these movies are so preponderant when they're not that good. So like when Scorsese a few years ago said that Marvel movies or comic book movies, I forgot if he specified one, is not real cinema. I hate to agree with him. I don't know. I don't, I don't hate to agree with him. I totally agree with him. Now, this isn't coming from like a cinephile, cinephilic snob mentality. Because some of you who love these movies would say, Oh, you're such a snob, Gregory, coming up. Look, you have your preference and taste. I have my preference and taste. And I just think these movies are garbage. And when I ask people who like these movies, why should I watch this movie, Iron Man 2, if I know Iron Man's not going to die? Well, because, you know, the, the graphics are cool. Well, I, I don't care about graphics. If it's Mission Impossible Cruise movies where he does all the stunts and there's barely any CGI, all right, then I'll go see those movies because it's like, is Tom Cruise going to die in this movie or break his ankle like he did in Fallout? Okay. But we've seen such bad CGI 
comic book movies. Look at Reynolds's uh, Green Lantern. You know, that was atrocious. Look at one of the Hulk movies. A lot of these just aren't good movies. And kudos to Marvel for bringing in good actors, because I think that certainly helped. Getting someone of the caliber of Downey Jr., who is a, an excellent actor. I don't think Hemsworth is an excellent actress. I don't uh, actor. I don't think Chris Evans is an excellent actor. I don't necessarily think that Ruffalo is a great actor. Maybe May is going to mention him as one of her underrated actors. I don't think he's like you know stellar. I like him in indie movies, but if you look at the cast, I don't think Scar Jo is that good of an actress. Uh, I, I don't think the majority of people that are in these movies are excellent actors, but kudos to them to getting Downey. And you could say for the X-Men, the original series, kudos for them getting Patrick Stewart, for example. But overall, they're not good movies, and they're just a waste of my time. So I think it's just a combination of I'm old as fart, and I'm a curmudgeon. So when the summer rolls around, this goes back to where I mentioned uh, how, how can we save the theaters. I've seen maybe five movies in the theaters in the last seven years. And why is that? Because the majority of the movies that are coming out at theaters are these movies which I detest. And if it wasn't for my kids, that number would be like two movies in the last seven years. So it's a combination of me just being old. So these movies aren't made for my genre, my, my audience, my age group as a whole. And so my age group is left out because my age group likes dramas and maybe likes comedies and indie movies and those have been sucked out and kicked out and expelled by the theaters because they don't make money so part of it is it's not my age part of it i i will say and on a somewhat snob level that they're not that good and i don't want to waste my time on stuff where there's no real good plot and character development and there's way too much special effects and lastly, I just didn't grow up reading comics. So if I didn't grow up reading comics, and I'm not a comic geek, no offense to guys who like comics, but I'm not one of these guys. These movies aren't made for me. So the, the way they're profitable is there's enough adults who like these movies. And maybe I'll question their taste a tad. But then there's always teenagers, right? So the, the teenagers, and this is the other trend you've seen, is, is if you look at movies from the 1970s, almost all the movies in the 70s were geared toward adults. And then you saw this trend starting in the 80s, but certainly in the 90s and early knots, where movies started being geared, or at least the, the main ones that, that have theatrical release, are being geared toward the children. So Marvel, DC, all these people know, well, you know, the kids are going to turn out. Anyone who's, I don't know, eight and older, they can go to the theater are going to turn out or they'll convince their parents to take them. So they know they're always going to get a decent swath of people in there for a lot of money. So is this period going to end? Probably, maybe in 20 years, this will be like a fad phase of just all these comic book movies. And I would throw an Avatar as well, even though I do have respect for Cameron. I just don't need to see Avatar 3, Avatar 4, Avatar 5. I probably won't even see Avatar 2 when it's free. It's just... They're, I just don't want to see them. They're not that good. And this is this is why I loathe them. So I loathe them because I think they're hackneyed, they're trite, they're boring, and they've really destroyed the type of movies that I love. That's why I don't like these. Guys, go to the Cinema Rag at Facebook. I will post a poll if you're big into these movies. Go check that out. And as always, take care. God bless and pray. Thanks for listening to the Cinema Rag. Please post an honest review on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Check out the episode notes to visit our website and to make a donation. Lastly, follow the rag today. Until next time.